The Twenty Ninth Discourse. He may God be pleased with him, said. Regarding the saying of the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Poverty may well nigh lead to unbelief. The servant believes in God and surrenders all his affairs to God. He has his faith in the easy providence of sustenance from him and has also the firm conviction that whatever is to come to him can by no means escape him. And that whatever escapes him can by no means come to him. And that... Whoever keeps his duty to Allah, he ordains a way out for him and gives him sustenance from whence he imagines not. And whoever trusts in Allah he is sufficient for him. He says all this while he is in a state of ease and comfort. Then God tries him with calamity and poverty. So he takes to petition and humble entreaty. But he does not remove these things from him. It is then that the truth of the Holy Prophet's saying, Poverty may well nigh lead to unbelief, becomes established. Then as for him with whom Allah deals gently, he removes from him what afflicts him and gives him comfort and affluence and gives him power to be thankful and to give praise to God. And he continues doing so till the man meets him.
When Allah wants to try him, he perpetuates his calamity and poverty and cuts off from him the help of faith. Then he shows unbelief by finding fault with and accusing God and by doubting in his promise. So he dies an unbeliever in God, disputing his signs and feeling angry at his Lord. It is to such a man that the prophet of God Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him refers to in his saying Verily the man who is most severely punished of all people on the day of resurrection is one to whom God has given both poverty in this life and chastisement in the hereafter. We ask the protection of God from such a plight. The poverty spoken of in the saying is the one that makes man forgetful of God. And it is from this that he has sought his protection. The other man whom God wants to choose and select and whom he has included among his favorites and friends and successors of his prophets and has marked out as chief of his wallies and a great man among his servants and their learned men and their intercessors and their guides towards their master and their instructors in the path of guidance and in avoiding the evil ways. To such a man, he sends mountains of patience and oceans of the spirit of cheerful submission and reconcilement and of total merging in the act of God. Then he confers on him abundantly of his gifts and nurtures him with lavish care during all hours of night and day in company as well as in solitude sometimes in open, sometimes in secret,
in the latter case, with various kinds of kindness and affection. And these things he continues to get till the moment of his death.